Today I'm going to show you how to create two different types of binding scrapers for this garbage right here, utilizing two different types of material and these uh, quarter inch, let's see, what are they? Quarter inch by 20 by one and a half inch bolts with some quarter inch by 20 wing nuts, some razor blades, I just picked up a cheap pack and some washers. And I also have some stock of, uh, what is this? Three quarter inch poplar dowel and a three quarter inch poplar square. So I'm gonna make a round scraper and I'm gonna make a flat scraper. So I've taken a few things into consideration when wanting to build these scrapers. So I want them to be about three inches long because I believe my thickest guitar that I plan to build for now are gonna be acoustics or ES-335s and a three inch dowel rod or a three inch square is gonna be just perfect for that. It's gonna give you a nice hand hold. What we're going to do is cut off a three inch section of both the square and the round and then we'll show you the next step. Got my little mini hack here. Just gonna go right on the outside edge of that line. Give it a little score. Perfect, a little three inch piece. Now we'll do the square. Got that line crooked, but that's okay because I just need that spot right there for reference. Ah, actually, let's make sure this is squared. That would have been silly. I could have made a big mistake there. I'm going to do this the easy way, dummy. Again, I'm starting on the outside of my mark. And I'm just gently scoring this until I can... There we go. Now the bad thing about this type of little hacksaw is once you get so deep in, you only have either this cutting area or the end cutting area. I don't like to use the end cutting area because it gets too flimsy and you end up with an uneven cut. Here we have a fairly even cut with only this little corner here chipped away from where it stayed attached right here. I want enough room for the bolt head to sit up here. It looks like I'm going to estimate that to be about an inch and a half. All right, I'm just going to mark it this way. We are, ah, inch and a quarter. Perfect. So I am going to slice down, I think I said inch and a half a minute ago, but I meant inch and a quarter because inch and a half would be exactly half of the dowel and that would be too deep. So we're just going to make a little mark there. As my stopping point. I'm going to figure out which end I want to use. Probably this one. Make sure we're still against the green. Yes. And a quarter, perfect. Now I'm just going to go straight down the center. Now we're going to drill our hole for the bolt. Straight through here. So I'm going to need some various size drill bits for that. Use it all. 
to add a, or to make a pilot hole and use a, what is this? 16th inch drill bit. Now go up two sizes. Here's my battery's dying. So we go back to, did I do three thirty seconds already? Did not do the three thirty seconds. Maybe I did do the three thirty seconds. Eight. Five thirty seconds for now. This was the three sixteenths. Now we just want to take a little bit of sandpaper and remove any of the burrs. For final assembly, the materials you need are standard razor blade. What you're going to do is you're going to push that razor blade down into the dowel. You may need to use a uh, Flat head screwdriver to spread the dowel just a little bit. To, oh, that's a Phillips. To spread the dowel just a bit to get further down in there. Please be very careful with your hands. We may need to, uh, oh, there we go. Now we're gonna set the depth that we're going to need for the binding. So I'm gonna take a little precision ruler here and go measure the binding. And I'm initially going to be scraping a two millimeter area, which is the top of the body. So now I'm gonna set my razor blade to two millimeters. And I'll show you how we'll protect the backside here in just a moment. Once your razor blade is in place and set, you're going to take your quarter inch screw, or quarter inch bolt. You're going to run it through your dowel. Keep in mind, things may not line up perfectly because now you have a chunk of metal shoved between, or shoved into the dowel. So you may either have to thread it in, or push a little harder. This one is threading in. Then you're going to put your washer on. Probably should have a washer on both sides and your wing nut. Tighten the wing nut. Double check your binding or double check your uh, measurement, two millimeter. Now before you go to use this, because you obviously have this side of the razor blade exposed, I am simply going to Take some masking tape when I'm ready to use it and wrap it around the razor blade. Give it a nice cushion so it can't go through. And then we'll go over here and see how to use it. Now what I'm going to do is take our newly built round scraper and this is a two millimeter little edge here and I'm gonna take it across the top of this binding right here to clean this up, just to show you how it's gonna work. So with this razor blade sticking out, I actually have myself a, a nice little handhold as well for easier positioning. So with the round scraper, we're just gonna double check up. I have to pull it back just a little bit because I'm gonna hit the wood easy enough. 
we just unbolt a twist and just gently slide it back ever so much. Retwist it, double check, and we're perfect. And that is right along the edge of the wood. And we actually have a clean spot right there. Due to having quite a limited workspace, this was actually too cumbersome to use. I ended up removing the razor blade and doing it by hand because I didn't have an easy way to rotate the guitar around my work area. And I can't really swing the guitar out because I have no way to support the neck way out here overhanging into where I would normally stand. But for the half of the guitar that I did use it on, at least the, the thicker side binding, it was an amazing tool. It glided around just perfectly. It fit the corners, I'm sorry, it fit the curves perfectly. I didn't hit any of the wood as long as I you know, made sure to measure my binding and set the razor blade to the correct thickness. Binding is all scraped. I did that largely off camera because it has taken a long time and I don't want to bore you folks with all of that. I'm about to do some sanding sealer on the front and then I'm gonna let it sit for a little bit. I'll hang the guitar from my garage door and then spray the sides and back and get it ready for the true oil. All right, now we're gonna spray the sanding sealer on the back of the guitar and the neck and a little bit more on the front. The guitar is hung up from my garage door. I've already wiped it down with naphtha. I'm just checking for any little spots. Alrighty. So I'm gonna start at the headstock and work my way down. Whenever you're spraying, you don't want to just hold the nozzle and spray directly across. I see a lot of people do it. They just hold and spray. Nice, even sprays, releasing your finger at the end of each spray. Now we're going to let that sit for about an hour and then I'll come out and uh, give it another coat. I forgot to do the headstock up front. And the top. Doesn't need a whole lot. This is just going to help with the true oil process. And then whenever you're done spraying, Hold your can upside down and hold the button to clear it out. Stay tuned. The first coat of true oil is about to go on. I have gone and made sure with naphtha that we have not gotten any green off. Oop, any green off. This is where our soaked area was. And I don't want to hit it again because I'm getting ready to uh, true oil it. But no green came off, so we are ready to go. So I have these nice new exact cut rags that I'm unwrapping. Put the glove on, right? Let's see how this goes. May not be a wig in a frag. <laughs> oh, definitely not. Trying very carefully to stay with the grain. Push off over the edges.
we're not getting any green, which is great. Very happy about that. I believe this rag can be a bit bigger. So we will resolve that quite soon. I've never used this stuff before, so I hope I'm doing it right. Just getting with the green, trying to go similar directions. Oh man, that is beautiful. A little much. I blend this out. I can see I just have it a little bit uneven. And the fan behind me is causing it to flash a little bit, so it's it's getting pretty dry and tacky already. So I want to leave it alone as soon as I fit, finish filling these couple of dry spots that are appearing. And that would be the first of about hundred coats. I'm going to go up here and do the headstock. I'm not going to get too crazy and just start the back of the guitar yet. I want to get a couple coats on the front before I start Turning the body around. Oh my gosh, that is gorgeous. And we are going to do steel wool between coats. And look, no red, no green, just the brown from the true oil. So we are good to go. I'm going to clean up my mess here. Toss that rag. Wait an hour, or I'm sorry, wait two hours and come out for another coat. <laughs> 